This is a very simple project and it is a tool that I'm using in the shop right now in making some sash for a, for a timber frame building window sash and it's and it's a, a miter box a homemade miter box that uses a Japanese saw just a hand saw and it's very quick to make little miter joints on moldings for example so I'm going to start with the base making the base this project just uses some very simple tools and that's what I'm going to be doing here is just do is here's the pencil tool so I'm drawing a line on the green axis and I want that to be seven and three quarters inch long so I type seven three quarters and I need on the red axis now I need a length of this board of 14 inches so I'll type 14 hit return come back and then I'm back on the green axis and I'd like to make a rectangle here so I'm just inferencing off the end of that previous line and then coming back on the red axis to close up the rectangle. You could use the rectangle tool but uh, sometimes it's just simpler to use the pencil tool. I'm going to make that a component. This is the base of the miter box. So I'm selecting it all. I'm double clicking all that. It highlights and I'm making it a component and I'm going to call that the base and enter. So now I have a component and I can edit that component to give that board a thickness using the push-pull tool and that push-pull tool will bring that up to 13, 13 sixteenths. I'm typing return so I've got a thickness of 13 sixteenths. Now this is in x-ray view. I didn't know I was in x-ray view until I just did that. You can see through the whole piece and right here I can change that to make that a normal view that I want and so now I've got a base uh, and even I, I can just put a ba label on that if I want to that's the base there's another little platform that goes on top of this base and it is not quite as long it's an inch shorter on each end so I'm going to put a guideline on the red axis one inch away from the end there and one inch away from the end there and I want a uh, let's take the rectangle tool this time I'm going to click on that little intersection right there and see that little X and it tells me I've got an intersection and I want to be on the blue axis uh, actually no let me change that I'll put that on the uh, green axis I type the left arrow key to make it make this rectangle on the green axis and I'm going to go over here and come up well it's coming up in a place I don't want it to come but that's all right and it's down here in the lower right hand corner in this uh, uh, dimensions box down here it says I've got a 13 inch by 2 and 5 sixteenths 
Well, that was 14 inches. I want it to be uh, 12 inches. So I'm going to type 12, comma, and I want this to be 13 sixteenths high. That's the thickness of the board that I want on the platform here. So again, I'm going to double click to make this a component. Make component. I'm going to call this the, uh, what do I call this? The miter plate. Miter plate. And I can edit that component with the push pull tool and come back. I want this to be three inches, so I'm going to type three, enter, and there we have uh, basically the only two components uh, needed. So I need the actual miter curves in this plate, and I called this a miter plate, so there it is, labeled miter plate. And I want to make 45 degree angles with ang uh, miter joints on molding, on small molding pieces. So uh, I would like to be, have the 45s in the middle of this plate. So what I'm, I'm going to use some guidelines to find the middle. I want that to be on the red axis and I type the red arrow, the right arrow key and I move my cursor up here to this edge until it hits the midpoint and it shows it up with that colored dot. So that's the midpoint in that direction. Now I want the midpoint in the green direction, which is right there. So now I've got a uh, I've got a uh, midpoint here, and I'm gonna just on the blue axis make a little uh, arrow up there. Uh, little line segment to show where that center is. Now I can delete these guidelines and I want to make a 45 degree kerf in at that location. So I'm going to pick the protractor tool and move over here and it's on the blue axis that's what I want and I'm gonna click there and then I'm gonna come over on the red axis and then start the movement and it'll click on 45 oops I thought it there it is 45 degrees The kerf is going to be very thin because I'm using a thin Japanese saw where the uh, blade is probably about a 30 second fat. So I want a 30 second groove here. And I can do that several different ways. I can uh, just, let me just draw a line over this guideline. And in doing that, I want to edit this component because I want this groove to be a part of that component. So I'll draw a line right there. And then Let's say I want a 30, what did I say, a 30 second thickness. 
a 1 32nd thickness. So one, I'm typing 1 32nd. And I've got a guideline. And can I draw over that guideline at the right spot? And it's this little intersection here. And make sure I hit the right intersection here. And I've got a parallel line then. And I can make that kerf with the push-pull. First of all, I'm going to get rid of these guidelines. I don't like guidelines to be around and mess up, confuse things. So now let me edit again, edit the component, and use the push-pull tool to create the kerf. So see how that face highlights with the push-pull tool? Click on that and then just bring it down. And click on this edge down here, the bottom edge, and I've got a kerf now. Uh, that little, there's a line segment that I can drop. It shouldn't be there now. There, now it's opened up. When you actually make this kerf, obviously you're going to cut into the base here. So there'll be a kerf along this face of the base as well. But now I need a 45 in the opposite direction as well. So I'll just use this kerf to create the next one. And I've just drawn a select box there, left to right, and I can, I'm going to use this center line as a reference here. I'm going to just use, be on that end point and and I'm going to tap the control key to copy, copy that just over here to the right. And then right click on that and flip along the red direction. And there, I've done that. And now I want to get this back to the to the a the proper place over here and I've picked the center line and I'm clicking on the midpoint and now we've got another kerf but did it it's not actually a kerf yet so I need to delete that, delete that little edge there, delete that little edge there. There's a whole bunch of edges that go away up here. I'm just clicking on these little areas here. And I'm losing the face uh, by, I'm losing the face that I need in the kerf. To get that face back, all I have to do is trace over an edge like that. And that didn't work. Let me go across there and oh I see what's missing here let me just draw this back in here so I don't lose the faces did I lose 
Do I have the faces back? I, I think I've got all the faces back. So, um, I need some edges. I need some vertical edges here. I'm going to x-ray so I can see what I'm doing. I need some line segments. And am I still in edit? Yes, edit mode, yes. So I'm going to take the line tool and draw that down to there. Draw that down to there, draw that here, draw that here. Uh, now I should be able to get rid of these little pieces right here, these little edges right here, and save the curve. Also, these go away down here. Now let's look at this out of the x-ray mode and I can see that I need to do some deletions over here. Get rid of that edge. Get rid of that edge there, which is gone, and that one's okay. So it's looking better now. And I can get rid of this this uh, little post here, and I've got my little miter box. And I'd like to have a template of this for the to make it that shape. So I'm going to go to the top view, and I want camera parallel projection to make a full size template. And since it's symmetrical, and I only want this part really as the template, I can. Uh, make the fill the screen with the part that I want. Basically, from here to here is all I need. And um, so I want to print that. I'm going to just pull it out. And I want to print it on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. And I'm going to just move this out. Let me see what, move that out of the way a little bit. And let's see what this looks like on a uh, sheet of paper. I'm going to just come in a little bit more and do a file print preview. And this box comes out and I want to make sure that I don't have fit to page. Um, uh, these two could be that and here I've got a one to one ratio so it says I'm going to have one page at a one to one ratio. Let's click on OK and see what it looks like. There it is. I can print that out on one sheet of paper, take it down to the shop, and uh, mark it out, uh, in, flip it, and mark the other side. So uh, that's a nice tool to be able to use in the shop.